wish it chose to freedom. What what on earth are we drinking here? These are called Irish car bombs. And what exactly goes right into an Irish car bomb? Our Irish whiskey, baby, wait, 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 wait. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna toast first. We're gonna toast, toast to one. one. We're gonna First, These are Irish toast, car bombs. First toast, then drop. Toast, then rye rye Irish car bombs, because we didn't, Joe was too cheap to buy Irish whiskey, so we got rye whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> so what's in it again? Uh, like Irish cream liquor, supposedly Irish whiskey, but so we'll call them rye Irish car bombs. And then, uh, what's that stuff called? Uh, Guinness. 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 You right. drop it in here and it explodes. Yeah, you gotta, want it to you gotta down this thing, Just Tony. You gotta drink the whole again. thing. I gotta clean this shit so, up. So we're gonna toast. We're gonna toast first, and then we're gonna drop yeah, your carpets and roll. Yeah. So, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Now let's toast. Are you ready? To All right, freedom. To freedom. 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 Good. Oh. Oh shit. <laughs> drop it in. Yep. I don't know if the rye whiskey works. Didn't explode very good. Get rid of the must crush it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. yeah. You That's guys, too much, you man. You guys will be well on your way now, man, huh? Yeah. So guys, how about John Stossel? <laughs> That's what we're right. supposed to. That's one of the topics. All right, I need it. Dude, I feel drunk just watching. Oh yeah. That was, I was, that was, that was, yeah. That was pretty, that was pretty intense. intense. Really yeah. Intense. <laughs> <laughs> it was All right. good though. My name is Mike. I'm Kelly. Jacques. Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Tony. My <laughs> story. Uh, you all know me as Christopher Cockwell. Like <laughs> Dan. <laughs> and my name's Joe. <clears throat> this is the Welcome to Roundtable. Oh shit. <laughs> Welcome to Anarchy Roundtable, episode fifteen. 14, 15, what the it's fuck? It's 15. Are you sure about this? I you am sure. up on five. No, I didn't. Yes. No, five no. was two different episodes. Anyway, and you made it Sean fun. Sasso, okay. all right? Are right, we're, we're, we're going to do a speed start. round? A new, uh, yeah, we're, that was one other thing, too. Yeah. So we're, we're going to do a speed round where I'm going to ask the question. It's kind of a why, what combination question. Um, the why part of it is... Why do you want to live in an anarcho society? And you're going to answer it by saying what you expect the world to be like. How, how do you expect the world to be better if we got rid of the state? And, in 30 seconds or less. And you, you, want, start. you want to do like 30 seconds or less answers, kind of, kind of quick. But if you have one word answers, that's cool too. But if you have to explain, explain. So, so within like 10 seconds, maybe. Whatever. whatever. Just that's short cool. answers. That's all. Um, so first, first one for me is um, eliminating the state. I just um, heard recently that if we had taken our regulations back just to where they were in 1940, our economy would be roughly three times the size it is now. That's just regulations. That doesn't even count taxation. And it's 1940s, okay, level, not in the state. Up. So, <laughs> much fat, much bigger economy. Uh, mainly, I hate roads and poor people. <laughs> right. If there's anarchy, quick, really quick, getting definitions. No, I mean, just do your 30 second why you would prefer to get rid of why, the state. Why would you prefer to get rid of the state? What, what you... I, I, well, oh, the state itself, well, it's the violence and things I don't consent to and agree to. Okay. All right. Yeah, you go more. Let's go. <laughs> so if uh, we got rid of the state, it seems like a substantially smaller number of idiots would be running things. Because nobody would be. Now, my, dude, things. no one's running this thing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> what, what I mean? Um, you know, if once you decentralize but, yeah. power, because there's always going to be power. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you just make it compete. I would never presume to know it was best for other people, and I don't want anyone telling me what to do or doing the same for me. I guess because it the economy would be so much bigger because there would be no licensing and taxes and regulations, so people could do whatever the fuck they want to do. And, uh, Two cheers like, for the economy. The world would be a beautiful place. <laughs> cheers. 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 So what's our topics? Today, well, was, that was one of them. Speed round. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Does anybody have a second, a Dude. second speed round at it before we move on? Mm. I don't like poor people or roads either. All yeah. right. Yeah. Fuck those people. Who would build, build, build the roads? Who would build the roads? Actually, I, I do have one. By me. Flying cars. 
Think about this. Who will build the them? Tech, the technology. Who will build the air? Who will build <laughs> the, the flying <laughs> car roads, Jeff? The flying car roads. No. Think about it. The world's kind of air for the cars okay. that fly there. Sorry, Joe. We'll give you time. The technology <laughs> to make... First of all, all airplanes can taxi. They can all drive down the road. They can all fly. The technology to make a flying car, if not a vertical takeoff one, but at least like an airplane that you can land locally and then drive home, yeah. has been around since the 40s. Yet, we don't have them. There, there, there's one company inventing them now. Because the DOT and the FAA. Think about the, the double fecta of the <laughs> DOT and the um, the That's FAA true. trying to satisfy both of those organizations in one piece of equipment. That's why we don't have flying cars. We would totally have flying cars if well, we didn't have this. I, I'll take one contention with that. Um, there is a practical issue of a flying car in the context. If I hit someone on the road, I know I'm not going to fall out of the road. If I hit someone in the sky, I'm going to not only hit them, but I'm also going to descend towards the earth. Yeah. That's so, one thing I've always said, like, if you're if you're driving, you want to have, like, a safe car so you don't, like, because it runs out of gas, you don't get in a bad spot. If you're in a boat, it's even more important because if you run out of gas in the middle of the ocean or a lake, you're, you're fucked. fucked. <laughs> and if you're in a plane and you run out of gas, well, you better have a good parachute. <laughs> And then it, even, it escalates for, like, probably a helicopter and then a rocket yeah. and stuff. So well, I mean, and this is why... There is a... There, it's more to it than regulation. Well, this is regulation how people... Might, make it, might be possible with... There, there would be yeah. more people flying planes right now, for sure. There definitely would be... I mean, and this is... Well, these things that you bring up are definitely real concerns, and that's why the FAA exists. But that doesn't mean that everything they do that is doesn't get in the way... Point. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's why it exists because people understand all of these things and they feel like they need some central controller to control it all. Doesn't mean that it couldn't be controlled another way, but it is why the FAA exists. It doesn't mean that that's all the FAA does. It gets in the way of all kinds of things like any government organization would. Well, like the and drones. without it. Like personal drones. Yeah, like personal drones. Now, we brought that up in, mm -hmm. uh, was it episode six, I believe it was? I my drone of the story. Um, some about the weight of the drone. The, the drone is more than half a pound. Now you have to register it with the FAA. Mm. Um, That's why I use my dog to do everything. And right now it's five dollars. It won't surprise me if you know it goes up to like twenty five dollars. And you go and you buy your drone at the store for twenty five dollars, and you have to pay twenty five dollars to the government just to fly the stupid thing outside. Um, it, it, the government just gets in the way of technology and i know the technology to make this product has been around for at least 70 years and it doesn't exist in the market you can pre-order one now for you to put down like a ten thousand dollar deposit for this little plane that drives down the road and you can mm -hmm. land it at your local airport 70 years after the technology has been invented you can finally pre-order one but you still can't buy it well i just i'm, I'm looking at it from like uh, just a practical issue, just, you know, if everyone had a flying car, we would all probably need, you know, driveways that were 200, 300, 400 feet uh, long. No, you don't. Minimum, no, no, no. Just a lot. You just need, an, all you need is a runway in your neighborhood. It's like, you drive your car to the runway, then you take off, and then you fly to a runway in another neighborhood, and then you drive. Have you ever been to a drive. They've, they've got, like, Airport yeah. neighborhoods where people have everybody that lives there has their own airport. Well, they're pretty there's, badass. There's stuff like that too. There's one over but on, there uh, are even now. There's yes. runways in every county across the continent. Um, the, imagine if there were even more. Like there mm. could be a runway every couple of miles. You could land and then drive to the last you know couple of miles to your destination. There's no reason why that wouldn't work. And of course, if people had these kind of flying cars, obviously vertical takeoff. Would you know the the money would be pouring Why can't we into it? Transporters. Um, well, and, and, and that would, and that would come about. And now <laughs> all fly. you need is a space big enough where there's no trees where you can just you can take off. Vertical, those things could be everywhere. Vertical takeoff is a little prohibitive because the amount of energy that's required. Yeah. You need a lot of thrust. You need a lot of thrust versus right a plane that's taxiing. And there is a technical thing. You. Yeah, All the right, plane wants so to go. Okay, Won't you just fine. stay <laughs> here? <laughs> Won't you just stay home? I mean, do you really need to go anywhere? Well, I mean, I'm just thinking, you know, <laughs> in an end, Kapistan, 
and can't stand when there's no roads. I hate that term. Mm. When there's no roads. <laughs> <laughs> Not as much as I hate that stupid hat that he wears. You know, I wear it because I'm, I kind of hope a little bit it gives you a little bit of cancer. Just, just <laughs> enough. <laughs> just enough to fuck with Strange. you. <laughs> I think it sends the wrong message. No, I, I don't really. I, you can't see your face for one thing, but I wonder if people just casually flipping through YouTube channels. The weird part of YouTube? Yeah. The weird part of YouTube? The weird part of YouTube? You're not familiar with that term, are you? You're not familiar with the Uh, term, the weird part of YouTube section? Because what happens is you watch a weird video, and then then YouTube just keeps suggesting other more and more and more weird videos, and then you're in the weird (laughs) video. Yeah. The videos that make you say WTF. The point is to, is to agitate you. So you're trying you. to get on the weird part of YouTube, is that what you're saying? No, I mean, well, that's all your All publicity is good publicity, right? According to your, your idol there, Donald Trump. He's not my idol, oh, but he will make America great right again. <laughs> <laughs> Danny is being sarcastic. I don't know. I mean, we have to say that for people because people hear him say that and think he's serious. I mean, why not make America great? So, Kelly, I mean, we did that voting video and people Kelly. thought we were justifying voting as we were making an entire video about why you shouldn't vote. Well, Cal, I'm sorry, but I, I <laughs> ran into him. Cal, I ran no, into him. Him. I, I ran into him at the MPLC fest. Too much. You can't stop talking. No, I ran into him at the MPLC fest. I told him a few dead baby jokes, but he dead seems... Dead baby jokes? Yeah, dead baby <laughs> jokes. Still, come on, man. Right, come on. Looks like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go down this... this One. I'm not, not, not going to tell him. I'm not going to... No, I'm not gonna no I mean, we just can't explain him right now. Right. right. But I just sat there and I, I told him these jokes and he just seemed... Um... I don't want to say intoxicated, but like he... He like, was intoxicated. <laughs> he was intoxicated. <laughs> I don't want to say intoxicated. Yeah. I, don't, no, I, don't know, I don't know his state of mind, so I don't want to make any suggestions. Dude, Danny, well, we don't need to say that. Though, man. It's very like black and morbid, though. And then someone who doesn't know that you're joking, it, it, either even if you do, like it brings images in people's minds. And then, like, that it kind of fucks with me. They probably even at the same time know that you're joking, man. But probably. still, at the same time, for me, man, that brings up images for me, man. I have a and lot of... And then that distracts me from the moment. I understand issues. you're joking. It's totally do, dude. So I like it. A lot I like of it. I do, too. Know, but still, don't know some... when I'm joking. Sorry. Well, it's hard to tell when you're joking, because you're not funny. I, I can always <laughs> tell you're joking. I probably do. At first, too, I never met you until, like, after Facebook. I used to see your post on Facebook all the time. Yeah, most people you, just think I met you fucking real life, dude. Dude, this fucking humor on Facebook. I was like, this dude's a fucking dick. Like... I met you real life. You're awesome, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jock. What, what did you say? Yeah, I said most people are right. <laughs> I'm just fucking with them. Just... So, right. Kelly, what's your story? Yeah, we we gotta do anarchy stories. Dude, that's what we're talking about. This guy, this guy yeah. seems okay, yeah, yeah, This is a guy. I feel like. Yeah, we, I feel like yeah. I made So the anarchy good. story is a spotlight. Like, you know, like, like, how did you become to your yeah, views be on ending know. the state yeah, and um um let Kelly talk for herself and and, and mm. why? I mean, we kind of did a little bit. In this thing I know now, she's but... just a woman, but that was a joke. You know, we got social justice warriors out here who might see this. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I kind of hope they all get no, cancer. I'm sorry, I'm just okay. teasing. So Kelly, ahead, Kelly, can you give us Respect a little bit me. of a story about like how you arrived at it's anarchism wherever you are? She's I not necessarily started out. I went to public school. Oh, I that's a horrible always thought I was. I feel really sorry I for I you. I was very democratic and liberal. <laughs> I hadn't really thought about it. Okay. But anytime any kind of topic came up, like my ideas were always just kind of very different from everyone else's, and I thought maybe okay, maybe I'm just evil. Well, but why would you have different ideas? Uh, I, I remember evil? like the the question of welfare. I always thought it was kind of a damaging thing. Like autonomy is a good thing in my eyes. I'm very stubbornly self sufficient, okay. and I'm very proud of it. And be. yeah, grateful. You have a cell phone, right? I do have a cell phone. Okay, grateful. I have a cell phone. Self sufficient in that capacity. I read the road. I came across the road. I love the road. I always loved the road. 
Okay. Yeah. Oh. Tell us a little bit about Thoreau and why it is that you love him. Oh my God. Oh, love. He, he's a good writer. He's an odd. He's an As oddball. He pours a cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, he's a very enjoyable guy. I loved Walden. Like, what was one thing that he said that really resonated with you? He has that <laughs> quote where if someone came to help him, he wouldn't answer the door. Oh, that he would avoid him like the plague. I always thought that was really interesting. Hmm. I don't know that one. Why is it? Yeah. What's the point? Well, Can you it? send me that quote? We'll put it in the show notes. Yes. All right. Let's that so, how do you feel then about doctors? If I mean, like, that seems like an odd thing, like huh? not accepting people's help just seems. Well, you know when you need help. You know yourself. Right. And if you if you want help, you can seek it. But you wouldn't, without knowing anything about another person, try to better their life. Fair enough. I think Thoreau. I think he's talking there about. Do gooders, isn't he? Isn't he yeah, talking about some, like yeah. and are, do gooders? Yeah. And he's talking are we about a bunch somebody, of like someone who knows uh, like uh, what know, the me. best <laughs> life is, and they want that best life for everyone, regardless of what they. But do aren't we them. a bunch of do gooders here? No. Not I mean, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, why are Dude, we? Dude, I just this? told you. I hope my hat gives you cancer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> everybody <laughs> besides you. No, but but why are we doing this? Jesus Christ! Is leaving everyone with the most potential. Like we're trying to give information. And have fun. Yes. We're trying to teach, Play. learn, and have fun. fun. That's my, my I value. thought we were just getting drunk and... Value, you know, fun, And, you know, play. enjoying each other's company. All right. All right. So, Jacques. <laughs> <laughs> we're just a bunch of do-gooders. <laughs> Dude, can I talk to this guy real quick on camera? Real quick? You, I don't know if Kelly's just done give, give me, like, all right, three Tony's minutes. Tony's got some questions for Jacques. Give, give, give me three minutes, all right? Two all minutes. Right, two minutes. Okay. Jesus He's got to get a drink in 30 seconds. Jesus. Those don't count. Three, it sucks when I start talking. Right. Dude, okay, so you came over here. This is the first time I met you. What brought you to meet these people? Is it a basically found uh, some sort of philosophy? Or uh, whatever you need to share. What's your, uh, I'm curious what right here. I'm yeah. Sure. yeah. So, I mean, I've hung out with, with Joe and Danny and, and these guys um, off and on. Probably not as much as I'd like to. Yeah, because you're an asshole. I'm a recluse and a uh, standoffish dick. You seem uh, cool, man. I tell you what, I talked to you before the whole recording. Sorry, Rob. Continue, dude. But uh, we'll yeah, so yeah, so I mean, sure. I'm I'm an anarchist. Um, uh, you know, I moved up here to Michigan what, four or five years ago now. And mm-hmm. I'm just fell with these guys, and so we've been doing. I get out when I can. That's that's about the story, really. Um, um, okay. Hold on. Okay. Well, okay. So, so how, how did you come? Oh, do you have more to ask? I have one more. Let me. All right. right. Now ahead. when I get to, I was, you know, okay. That's ask, ask your question. That, ask your question. All right. The use of violence uh, when it's simple is what brought you to like was it any other labels attached to it, such as voluntarism, anarcho-capitalism, libertarianism, non-aggression principle. What is something that you lean towards? There's other people who are anarchists, but also claim as anarcho-communists or mutualists, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's these dividends, and it's also usually associated the different ways they use you know actual physical force onto another person in the being of their own body, sure. and that is the real dividing separation, I feel like, with all these different variations of the so-called anarcho whatever, whatever, left, right, et cetera, et cetera, communist, mutualist. Now, when what is your drawing line on that use? Yeah, more or less. I mean, it's a complicated yeah. question. I know. Like, that is what I, I mean. Right. Seriously, man. And, like, when is it when is acceptable for you morally to do so on a person? Um, yeah, so, I mean, I agree with you that, that I think the question of non-aggression is the one that is probably most important when you're talking with anarchist people who purport to be anarchist. Um, because, I mean, if you don't really have a theory of what it is about the state that you're trying to do away with, if you just say, I'm against that organization right there, well, then there's all kinds of organizations that can do what the state does, right? Uh, there's all kinds of organizations that can that we can get rid of. We can get rid of the state, and then they could then we could have a million other organizations that do these exact things. So it's important that we have a definition, or at least something that we're um, something about the state that we can point to and say this is why we are opposed to the state, right. right? And I think the NAP is is a pretty good goddamn summation of what it is that about that makes the state peculiarly uh, uh, nefarious. What's your quick death? Definition of the MVP. I love definitions, but I like to go with anarchy though first. No, I want to go with this. But you want to go I, totally. I like to go with anybody on anarchy. I had this with Joe. Well, I think the NAP. I think Sorry. the NAP. I think there's 
like any any concept, it frays at the end. Like there, you can always talk about gray cases. You can always argue about the borders. You know, like is this? So what's your quick definition of the? But it's it's not initiation of violence. If nobody hits you or messes with your property, you are not entitled to hit them or mess with their property. Do you want to well, kind of like, let yeah, me I mean, basically. Let, yeah. Jack, let me ask you a question then. Um, so, going with the NAP, and this is something I find very interesting when it comes to parenthood discussions. I don't know if you guys are going to have kids or whatever the fuck, but... <laughs> <laughs> if you have little people... Whatever. Don't get technical with me. Very little people. Like, man, I don't care. The, cameras, just... oh. the camera. Oh my god. <laughs> fucking camera, dude. <laughs> no, we don't have like a... Alright, so camera, man. My, my question is... Um, so let's say uh, your, your kid... Um, let's say you have a, a toddler. And she or he runs up to the stove and like wants to put their hand on top oh, of Oh, this arm. one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... And spank them, right? No, 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 not spank them. But do you grab them and pull them away, or before do you, they touch it? Before they yeah, touch just it, yeah, move their hand. Yeah, burn their hand. Or do you let them? Do you yeah. let them burn They're it? Fucking new to them. Let them burn their hand because nah. one is the first option is well, you in a technical a sense, ha, well, in a real sense, you've actually violated their ability to ex- exercise. I understand that well. principle, mm-hmm. but on the other end. Um, they're not really necessarily cognizant of yep. cognizant of um, their behavior. <laughs> so this is one one of the things. I mean, one of the many many places where I think um, the NAP, like all principles, cognizant even even the best, cognizant. even the best principles mm-hmm. have gray area, and it comes to a place where you say, "What's common sense?" Right. Right. And what I w- what I would say there for me, anyways, is would a reasonable person want me to do this for them? Is it right? aggression to prevent and that's, someone and that doesn't from harming that doesn't, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't get you out of all the problems, right? But If you know if it's going to hurt, dude, all right, I want to put my hand on the stove, and I'm like, dude, I'm going to put my hand on the stove. I know it's going to fucking hurt as fuck. Don't try to stop me. All right? I think, well, you're an adult, and you know No, that. no, I, my experience, knowledge of this motherfucking right. shit, dude, right. that's going to fucking hurt if, I, if it's a really hot stove. Right. But to someone who has no knowledge of that, well, that's to what put I mean. your hand on the surface... Yeah, you can't communicate. That shit's gonna fuck hurt because you have empathy. You can understand right. the operated body just like you do the same nervous system. Pain is gonna occur, and it's not a very nice pain. No, burning is okay. Horrible. I think um, I think you can have principles, but you can't just. Some people just want to take the NAP to the whole. Well, 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 then, hey, well I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll I'll give you one that doesn't even get. I'll give you another one that doesn't even get into the question of. Okay. Let, let's talk about two adults. All right. Okay. You and me. So, so we, you and me. Uh, well, let's hands? talk about reasonable adults, so not you Can we hold hands? <laughs> you and <laughs> <laughs> right. So this is an example David Friedman uses. All right. All right. And I thought it was really good because uh, James Weeks and I have actually kind of argued. Oh, my about, God, but, James. Well, hold on, hold on. But, but, I love James. So I, was, I love James, and so, he's so frustrated. I wish I had this example when I argued with James about it because... Um, and James and I agree on ninety nine percent of everything. Mm. But I was saying, I was saying that property you rights. Ancom. You agree with was, James on most everything too. The problem is he has a few Let areas. Him finish. Just, so so I, was, right, right, right. I was saying that violations of property are necessarily subjective, right? And I, and so after, and he argued, said, no, 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 they're really not. And so David Friedman has this argument. You would agree, right? That me, you're you're in your house and I'm in my house. Me pointing a this bazillion is my house. me. <laughs> Well, I'm in your house, and you're in your house. No, okay. seriously. I'm next door, and I'm pointing from my property a gazillion watt light into your bedroom window. Just, just blasting it, right? Like, All right. Most common, it's common sense. Like, my photons are blasting your house, right? Like, well, that seems like a pretty aggressive thing to do. I think most people would say... That's a trespass. Wait, can I pause? Well, but was it before or after of moving into onto this property... Of the whereabouts of this beam light, because the beam light was brought to he- them. You're, you're you're going to the next level. I don't know if he's there yet. Well, well, we don't need I, to go I, that give, far give him a moment, Tony. Him. But but I, I, and even there, some of us who are radicals might say, "No, you have a right to do that." I probably would. Something like I you would know, say no. I would say no, right? Yeah. Well, the same thing with like you know loudspeakers. But the point is, okay, so we say a gazillion watt light blasting at your house at all hours probably a violation of your property rights. Well, what if it was half a gazillion? What if it was a porch light? What if it's a porch light? What if it's a candle? You know, at what? some point we have there is a subjective, completely bullshit line in the sand where a society will have to say, well, I have a, "This is an NAP violation." This is I have a problem. I have that problem. I live, you know, you guys been to my house. I live in a pretty dark community, and I, I like, 
I like it you dark in my backyard, and I had the neighbor right across the canal from me has this fucking street light in her backyard, and I hate it. It's like, I, I actually, when I have parties, I, I've gone over there and asked them, would you mind <laughs> keeping it off tonight, you know, and politely, but, but then again, as... Uh, uh, I would call myself an anarchist. Do I have that right to tell him not to do well, that? That's, you know, that's, 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 that's the point. That's not a good deal. Well, of course, but but I think the interesting thing is though the reason the NAP is a great framework to where we can talk about these things. But at the end of the day, all you can do is go to your neighbor and say, "Look, dude, you've got a fucking gazillion watt light point." And well, you know, and, and I think if you had a gazillion watt light bulb, you have to, to, you have to talk to That's the only thing you If my kids are getting sunburned, yeah. I might just shoot them. There, there is a threshold <laughs> where the well, light would uh, become uh, so uh, bright oh, breaks. that it would be considered a trespass mm. beyond that which the normal it's person in the community would do. And somewhere the market, the law, the market for law would figure out where that brightness is, and it might end up with you in front of an arbitrator. And, or your neighbor and, behind a gun. And, and, but you know what? I would argue. I, I think you're right. But I would argue that the individualist anarchist tradition has always recognized the squish, so it, the squishiness of law and yeah. rights. Because if you look at Lysander Spooner, he talks about uh, juries. Squishiness. That's a good word. Well, yeah. No, it is a right? squishiness of law because if you have a candle on your right. property here, it is shooting photons it, they, into photons, your neighbor's. Yeah. Property that is technically, <laughs> if you want to get like hyper technical, that's a trespass. But you cannot well, I mean, live without having light. Like right now, the light from in this room is going right. out the window and into Dude, the neighbor's property. There is no morality. You can do the other. Um, you know, like, so technically, you, you can, we are what? taking um, energy and pointing it at the neighbors. And and if you want to go hyper technical, that's a trespass. But you have, you have to, to allow for. Some of this in order to get along in society. That's right. So then this is where courts, common uh, law, right. common law right. comes in, in, into play in order to decide at what point do you have too many photons pointing at your neighbor. And we don't, we don't have the answer to that. That's the kind of thing that would emerge from the, well, the, um, it depends on your community. The, the marketplace for law. Absolutely. And it might be different in different places. Now, let me... It most likely would be. Yeah. Okay, so let's go with a, a slightly revised version of, you know, you shooting your flashlight into your neighbor's okay. lawn. Um, so let's get into, theoretically, property value. Okay. Mm. Um, what value is there? That's not property. Well, <laughs> um, this is something I thought about. I, I don't really have... A, I haven't really thought about it like a lot, like the logical context or logic, not the logical context, but the logical conclusion. Um, suppose my neighbor next door erects a giant fucking black uh, dildo. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> How did I know? It could have been anything. It could have been anything. Why is he not the moment you said that, though? The moment he said giant, I was like, he's going to say dead. Oh. It's going to be a giant. <laughs> It's so, so racist. Oh, it's so okay. Well, you haven't seen my dick. Why so. can't it be Did a hot pink dildo? Well, Thank okay. God. So, <laughs> so that, your neighbor erects this giant cock in the front yard. It's an erect cock, is what you're saying. Well, it's not going to be flaccid. What the fuck? It's erect. erect. Okay. It's not going to be a, a so, chode. Right, so, your neighbor so, does this. Okay, so your neighbor's right, got a big right. erection. So my neighbor does this, which happens to be a cock. and. I want to sell my house. Mm. Now, maybe the people I want to sell to are a little... Really like big black cocks. No, yeah, no, 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 not necessarily. Maybe they're they're interested in the house, but they're Christians. Um, so what do I say to my neighbor? Because technically they haven't really done anything right. to harm me. Because the light that's reflecting off of that big oh black... Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 
Hey, 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 h
you know, eight or, you could, or like, you could have a neighborhood. But it's where not people... as good at your at your birth. You know, that's I, no, 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 people. totally right. No, this is right. the thing that stays. They're going back. Do most right. of them? It's always a social right. contract. If you don't like it, you can always leave. You know, like you're, you've yeah. been birthed into this. You agree to it by being birthed right. here to this within this geographic region that whatever the state or of whatsoever kind has a boundary over. Right. They agree to those rules by being birthed here, man. And like you don't like it, you can leave. And I'm yeah. like, dude, no, 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 no. What are you talking about? At this process, you know, it's something I never consent to. It's well, just been forced uh, automatically. I mean, so what's but, your opinion on this uh, situation, Kelly? The giant black. Yeah, that was a good one. I, I know, but yeah, but I get lost. Just, and that makes Kelly, sense. can I just like, make an assumption? If you here? put a bunch of work into your house, you might do something people don't like. You're not guaranteed the value of that work in your house. Yeah, you so might just you, you, you build a nice neighborhood with all your own neighbors. neighbors. You know that rest, but whatever. You're not promised the value of that neighborhood. If you, you, do if you build a sunroom, you should be able to do so. Get a sunroom. If you own the property, you can you put a black dick in your fucking lawn if you want to. It's your fucking property. Fuck up. I want to build a fucking black dick in my lawn. I'll do it. I feel you're like we're going to have to edit black dick out. At least one or two hundred of I'll do some of the things. I may not want that dick. I'll just do the piss you up. What are you saying? I can't do it? I can't fucking do I think we might have a title for this episode. The big black dick. I'm just kidding. No, it's just... That's good. You might get some new people, though. Yeah, yeah that's feeling good. the video though. Who knows? But anyway, no, no, I, I, I tend to agree. I, 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 I yeah, think yeah, that they, you don't have the right to. Oh, um, hmm. But this is exactly why, like, like what I keep coming back to. Why I think the NAP is a good framework. It's a good starting place. But ultimately, communities are going there. There's going to be some collectivism insofar as well, neighbors. What is that? Well, what is insofar as 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 voluntary ultimately, collectivism is a ultimately I mean, common yeah, sense is going to have to. So for example, so for example, um, why I say some collectivism is 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 impossible to avoid is because when when you when there's photons coming at your at your at your um, at your so collectivism, I mean, um, there's going to have to be some common consensus on standards that that you can't just dictate from from the NAP, right? That 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 are going to be subjective. That we're going to say, eh, we don't like that, we like that, right? And there's going to have to be some of it at the margins, even if it's just uh, w w Porsche lights are okay, you know, million gigawatt lights are not okay, right? Like there's going to have to be some things the NAP can't tell us, and as neighbors, we're going to have to come together and say, this is good, this you know, isn't. I actually had this question recently within the last month or two, driving down a road and being blinded by somebody's headlights, and I was like, how would uh, a free society, an anarchist society or something, deal with something like bright headlights that make it so it's dangerous for me to drive, you know, with those things in my well, eyes? There's a thousand issues like this. I, 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 have, a, yeah, yeah. I have a solution for you, Mike. Quit being a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke, man. I'm just, I, I, think, I didn't I know what you guys were talking about. I was in my own mind, but when he said that, I started laughing. Like, sometimes I think it would be nice if tires were quieter. And mm. some tires are designed to be really loud, and some of them are designed to be quiet. What about those things they put on semis? Um, you know, there's a million issues like this. How, how do you determine tires? how loud tires are? Because when you're driving down the road with your loud tires, you're putish put, 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 Putting sound waves on everybody's property. Everybody's you property. Do. When you but, talk, you're putting out sound waves. You're violating yeah, an AP, you, man. You're Joel, not, be quiet. You're Stop not, it. You're violating an AP. Right, exactly. <laughs> you're, you're sound waves are going in his you're ears right now. Right. Right. You're violating an AP. Stop it, Right, I'm hitting Stop it. You're doing it right now. Right now. I'm joking, but... but um, <laughs> you, get, you get it, though. Uh, but it will, certainly wouldn't be reasonable to say that nobody can drive anywhere because every car is going to make sound. Well, this is this. And, I keep coming back to this is yeah. why. What about no matter people? what? There's going to have to be common. Breathing. There's going to have to be common. Violating your your vibration. Just ostracizing. Looking at them. I mean, should we just all kill everyone? I mean, no. Danny, yeah. Damn it. I'm <laughs> okay. No, we should. Global looking at Danny violates violate my. Right, we'll <laughs> so all right, so, all right. We're, we're, this, we're, we have to be careful not to talk over each other. This is we why. Talked about this. So to, re, re, to uh, kind of ground it, right. maybe Rothbard. Uh, Rothbard said, "This is why we're. We should probably stop talking as much about um, the technicalities. Rights, rights in this in this this expansive way, uh, and start talking more about property, right? Because we don't." We don't really believe in free speech. We believe in free speech on your property, right? You don't have any right to say anything on my property. Like well, anything. Well, no, let's be careful here because if 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 I'm on your land, 
Don't forget the buyer's property, too. Yeah. If, right. If, totally. if yeah. I'm on your land, do I not have an expectation to my own body rights? Right. Okay, Absolutely. so anything no, that I... You're on his gray land. Area. It's gray area. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have a rule Just on his property on, bro, that in order to side. enter his hold property... On, hold on, hold on. It requires anal penetration. Right. Oh, uh, just, I, I, just because you stepped on my property yeah, doesn't mean I'm yeah. not the Lord. And Joe's like, you know. I have a dream. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I. What this is. That? So by extension, if I say something offensive to you on your own land, but I'm not okay. The, 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 the thing with the NAP. So I can shoot you. Well, no, 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 no. I like this one. <laughs> the What I like about the NAP can, is it, it. It's very good about. Practical property, so yeah. your physical body. Yeah. Now. That's now. A given. But if I if I say to Mike, you know, Mike, you're an ugly piece of shit. Um, Where's the damage? Did your body get hurt? Is yeah. Okay? No, I, is, I, I, did, I didn't touch your penis legs. or anything like that. So, right. so, <laughs> so like, I don't really see it as There's like another. Gray. I don't see free you speech as uh, as a violation of anyone's property rights. If we go down that path, that's oh. how you ended up with those those faggots with the goddamn SJW goddamn no, you're I don't get on that, but trigger I, something feminism and trigger aggression. shit. Yes, bullshit. Feminism and Yeah. And to be clear, I don't think Tom, and, uh, Danny is talking about people that oh, have media, sex man. with the same sex. He's just using it as a direct person. Try to keep it the one person talking So right? that's that's my point is that when you start trying to regulate um, people's thoughts um, or voice on something, you are really getting into that territory where, like, you can't have free speech, you can't have free thought, you can't be an individual, you must conform. And it doesn't really matter to me if it's in a public square or in a private area, um, because words, as far as I can tell, don't really hurt you. Yes, yeah. you have but feelings. what about words that are used to... Commit fraud, I guess, or um, or to uh, hurt people. I guess. I mean, he could say, "Well, that's all I'm gonna do with him." I'll give you a hundred dollars to what kill else? Danny. Would that those words be? I'll be using actual physical force in the future. No, I don't think. I don't think it's a validation. I don't think it's. It's a whole topic. I don't think it yeah. actually. I know that's why. It, I don't think it actually violates my, my right. right. My right. I, I don't. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna get that. It really too. doesn't violate me in any capacity, other than if he you should actually. Too. No, if Tony actually did execute the I was behavior, about Jacques. or Jacques, if Jacques actually executed the behavior, there's no, there's sorry, stop me, no, it's you. There's no, your wording has no effect on me up until the point that someone actually physically acts upon it. Well, yeah. nope. What if he takes the I contract? Got, I, got right counter, I got a counter on that one. Good. Dude, if you threaten, and I understand your language, that in the future, if I don't go according to your choices and my behavior, what to do, you so know, there would be a consequence of physical force. So if you use against thing. me, therefore, I would understand yeah. that. So, you use force. So I would use force against you, is what I'm saying. Like, what was the thing? Yeah. Well, there's a problem deep. I think we're just... I just... I, 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 I don't want to give that much extension towards language just because... You, I can threaten you, like if I'm playing video games with you on Xbox Live or whatever. You'd be joking around with me. I can me fucking talking. I can shit talk you all day. No, that's day. different. No, but when how is it different? When I believe, it's joking, it's shit dude, talking. seriously, not like, necessarily. After you, like, dude, if someone's coming to you like motherfucker, I'm gonna fucking kill you. I got a fucking suit. Like, dude, say you went to the Middle East right now, right? You know, the whole propaganda or probably training okay, okay. the media of suicide bombers. Like, dude, you know, like, say, um, hey, they, they, they threaten you with something because they got a fucking suicide bomb on you to do something. Are you going to accept that to be real or are you going to be like, yeah, fuck you. If you don't listen to me right now, you take off right now and fucking blow you up right now. But, yeah, but, but if somebody, if, if you fucking start taking off, like, dude, ignore them. You know what I mean? Like, you might, might believe that threat to be real. Damn. So when people threaten you shit with violence, dude, you know, some sounds have an action of meaning to use. Like yes, until the if, action if, is yeah, you go up and yeah. Yeah. until the okay. action is okay. no, no, because no, if still, you come up to me and threaten then, to kill me, they're, they're and action. I take that threat seriously and pull my gun out and shoot you in the head. No, but be alarmed, be alarmed, though. I'm gonna fucking no, shoot him right away. No, that. absolutely not. What I think if somebody, what if, what if a guy came to you and said, "Your wallet or your life," and you give him your there wallet, there you go. There's Has he no. committed no crime? Yeah. What if you shoot him? Because 
If you come well, over crime, no, you no, no, that's no, coercion. With, you, with your own No, that right. is coercion. No, 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 no. You're, you're not. I mean, words not, can be used to commit coercion. You're not. You're not giving me. That's full, a gray area. You're not giving no, me full for me, detail. Not gray. If I mean, a guy comes up to me and says, if Joe comes up to me right now and says, Danny, <laughs> give me your wallet, and I see no, um, I see no ability of him to enforce his threat. Sure. Oh, like a little kid? It has to be a credible threat. It has to yeah. be a credible threat. Nah, yeah. that's a, uh, all right, thank you. So, but, I would but now, if he had a gun, and he pointed at me and said, your wallet that's, or your life. That's a subjective area, though. But it's because, not subjective. No, you but, don't know. I, I would say it is subjective, but I, but I think it's that doesn't mean it's... That doesn't mean it, it's not important. I think you're right. I if mean, it's I mean what, if, what if a guy... I mean, what if a guy says... So you're... I think the distinction is it has to be credible. Yeah, if a two-year-old walks up to you and says... Your money or your life. No. And is pointing his little finger at you. Quit you don't have the right to smash it. What, what if a six year old comes at you and actually has a real gun and says that and then shoots you? Or, or that's more that's what, exactly. what if, because you have the right to defend I, yourself I think against that. What you're that, bringing right? up is, is 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 important, and I think it is your your ability to gauge the credibility of the threat. But but we can we can imagine that this gets grayer and grayer. What if what if I said, hey, leave me a million dollars at such and such place, uh, <clears throat> or the bombs I have strapped to you, and you're, that are in your so, basement rigged to blow uh, up the blow. Like, you have no way of knowing and it, and maybe you have reason to suspect that maybe, maybe it's possible, right? Well, so I think the bottom line here is there's a thousand issues that could come up. These are legal issues. This whole show so far has been about all of these legal issues us sitting here on this no. couch. For, when you we're, we're, use force against these certain we're, issues, we're not going not to be able to. I know. Hold on, hold on. What, sort of shot. You need to. Um, what, what what I'm getting at is there's thousands, maybe millions of these legal issues that are going to come up in a free society. We're not going to be able to solve them here on a couch with six people. This is yeah, an can. emergent order. <laughs> this is, is it, hold on, hold on. Ah. This is an emergent order that's going to come about through a system of common law, law. Common law yep. that takes place over a thousand years. The market will provide. The market will pr provide answers to these solutions. I want to take the show into a um, slightly different direction. Okay. We have. Yeah. Um, Jacques here, who is pursuing a PhD. Dude, you're PhD. No, I told you should wear mask. Give me no, give, give, <laughs> give, give no background. Your PhD. Cut. Cut. <laughs> cut. Don't yeah, don't give him any clues. Too, 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 yeah. Does mind. anybody need a beer? We're gonna cut his for a couple. Of seconds. <laughs> He's got to cut it anyway. So if okay. anybody yeah. wants to go pee or get a beer, no, we can cut it for a second. We, we you can, can cut it. Right you can ask the question. So you want to talk about? um what you're doing with your schooling, why yeah, man. You, why you're pursuing a PhD in history, and what you hope to do with that, and uh, what does that mean to you as an anarchist? Yeah, I, mean, I, could, I, could, I could talk to that somewhat, just, yeah. I'm okay. Uh, I mean, I just, it, it, gets, it gets easier to, you know. Well, you might want to ask the question again, so we yeah. can cut all that shit all right. out. All right, all right. So, what, what, what's the parameters that you don't want him to talk about? Uh, no, well... The fact that he's got a career process. What was the question? Yeah. What was the question? A very liberal university. Well, okay. to be honest, to be honest. So I, this is a whole topic right here. Why does that make you nervous? Yeah, well, we, well, yeah. Been, oh, that's another topic too. Yeah. Nervous, anxiety, fear. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, you called. Right. I'm right here. <laughs> no. So um, to be candid, from what I understand, people who have history majors, they typically. Majors in history. Or majors in history. Oh. Yeah, history majors. Um, it's the same thing. Why are you fucking things up? Why do you always fuck things up? Anyways. Um, <laughs> I want to be like you. All right, so why do you want to introduce <laughs> this topic? Well, no, I was going to ask is that, Jacques, um, why did you pick your particular field? Because I'll be candid with you. I I possess a master's. Joe possesses possesses. Ah, possesses a master's. Um, but what I've learned, and I've been, I, I like history just as much as anyone else, but history is very limited. Financially? Well, it, it tends to be rather limited in general in terms of uh, practicality and applicability. Um, I guess that's where Am I'm... Am I going to that? 
Yeah, so one of the things is uh, history. You really don't want to go into history. Well, I shouldn't say that. You don't. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Thank you. you the, 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 the answer is you shouldn't. It's a bad idea, and I messed up. No, You're um, trying to make a ton of money. Well, well, Tom, Tom Woods has made a very productive career out of being a historian. It just depends on what you do with hmm. it. It does do it. So what I would say to anyone that's going to major in, in, in history as an undergrad is um, really the best place for you to go as a history major is to stay in the academy, to be a professor, right? And so is that what you want to be, as a teacher? Yeah. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty much why you stay. Choice, Don't though. laugh at him. That's no, the, I, 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 I'm... <laughs> However, on, if you want to be a teacher... Because there's nothing else available to you with that thing of... Well, of well, I mean, that's pretty much that's pretty much why you do a history PhD is to go into the the. So if you have money, man, like that's what else you can do. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. but like, so is your goal no, to I'm... to to be a so your goal is to be an educator? Fine, that's cool. I I respect educators. Uh, uh, that's another conversation altogether, but we'll talk about okay. that later. Yeah, but like, um, uh, there's a lot of educators out there that are. Extremely, um, you respect the players, just not the game. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I respect the players, not necessarily the game, because I, I, there's a lot of shitty educators. There's a lot of, like, is your goal to be an educator to, like, raise more, <laughs> and caps? <laughs> Ricky Morty. Um, yes and no. Yes and no. I think the ideas speak for themselves. I mean, I'm an intellectual historian. So what I do is your intellect. What do you think? Well, of? I know you're that. That's, 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 that's not what you think it is. Uh, I do. That doesn't mean I'm an intellectual who does history. It means I do the history of intellectuals. You know, I'm just gonna say. I'm just gonna put my dick out there and say. You know, I think uh, you and I, I you and I intellectually, we could challenge each other. Um, well, you are definitely challenged, so I um fuck you. Party <laughs> breaks on. <laughs> that's the most fight words this game. No, but, it's not. So, I think the ideas speak for themselves. I, I love history. I, I There's a lot about the culture like of academia yeah, I don't like. There's a lot I, I obviously don't fit into the culture politically in many ways. But you of know course. what? <clears throat> um, Are you familiar with Prof. CJ? Yeah. yeah. Um, but the ideas speak for themselves, man. And, you know, I haven't had a, an opportunity yet to really teach a whole lot of, um, you know, things pertinent to these ideas. Um, but as I was saying a second ago, I, I'm, I'm an intellectual historian, which means I get to delve into all the sort of strains of philosophy. And, you know, I mean, these are classes I want to teach in the future, you know, the history of classical liberalism. Uh, I just did a lecture um, a little while back on the history of anarchism. Um, so the the potential is there. Thank you. But I, service. You should put a, you should <laughs> put a <laughs> camera in your classroom. Did you record that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. Uh, but, but my I'm that. but you something else that I can, uh, hold on. Let, let let him, sorry. Go ahead. I I think more importantly, what I what I do, what I've actually done with my last couple classes is. Um, I give them a spiel at the beginning of the class, uh, the beginning of the semester, about sort of intellectual anarchism. Um, and I think this is just as important. And what I mean by intellectual anarchism is the assumption um, that the people who provide you with ideas, the people who are the big shots in the realm of knowledge production, are just as likely to be fucking lost as the people who lead us in the political sphere. Right? Yeah. So yeah. approaching ideas, assuming the guy that wrote this book is a fucking idiot, right? He might be, he might not, but assume he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Um, exactly. You know, what 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 the professor lectures, you know, because usually I'm a I'm a graduate student instructor, which means I do like breakout sessions. TA. Right? right. So, you know, assume the lecturer may or may not know what the fuck he's talking about. There's no disrespect in that, and that's what you're there to or do. Or give you false information. Or he might give you false information. And I he told was them, giving false information. He was. It. And, often, and I told them, there's true. very strong likelihood I'll give you false information. And if I could just do that, if I could just get more people, people to doubt, to, un, to, to yeah. doubt the yeah. written word. To think for themselves. To think for themselves. To doubt. Because there's a magic in the written word. Like, for some reason, when it's in white and black, when it's on that page, people, even the most intelligent among us, tend to let things slip by without even interrogating them. I think it's put into us through well, our 12 years of, of yeah. going to school and ever being told this is correct. Yeah. And if you take a test and you answer something mm. 
different than what's in the textbook, then it's wrong. And you, and I still see this. I, I, so in one of the things we try to do, right, like in discussion sections, is just to discuss what happens may or may not be on the, the exam, yeah, very, right? Very viable. Let's 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 Discussing, talk about the ideas. Let's talk about communicating. Them, right? Absolutely. And what yeah, you I, what you I, find I is these these kids nowadays. Um, and I understand why. It's just the, the system that, as it is, they'll oftentimes not really be interested if they get the idea that what they're we're talking about isn't going to be on the exam. Yeah. If if they if they feel like the, the conversation is just going off in directions that aren't specifically on the exam, though, it's it's hard to get them engaged, right? And that you, it's kind of hard to blame them. The system we built, right? Like, I mean, their mm -hmm. futures are on the line here. Like, they've got to get what's on that exam. All right, all right. I, I think, think you need to be like subject change? active when you're. Uh, change? No, not yet. I think you need to be active when you're listening to people. How much That's time we got? Kind of how I do it is you kind of kind of doubt everything. I don't really, you know, even when friends tell me something like Joe says something about the Federal Reserve, I was like, well, I. I respect your opinion, but you know I don't necessarily you believe don't you. Use the money. I don't believe you just because you said right. it. You know what I mean? You gotta. I think it's uh, you have to have a healthy skepticism. You can sure. respect someone and maybe give Absolutely. weight to what they're saying, but uh, I think you have to doubt everyone, and and if you gotta be able to doubt yourself and not. And there's you know we're better about be this than to we change were. Your mind. History always has its sort of ossified narratives, like the things that just makes like everybody like. So it used to be the founding fathers, right? Used to be history was Thomas American history Jefferson? was all about all about the found the, the yes, goodness, right. the you know the 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 moral rectitude of the founding fathers and, and of the American uh, you know tradition. Uh, we've moved away from that. We're a little more cynical, but there's all kinds of other narratives, other ways. Well, one thing I've I've learned recently about the way history works is the first generation. After a major historical event takes place, is heavily influenced by the government propaganda that took place during that event, and then the the following generation after those people are dead, don't they go back and review what happened, and you you'll have a whole large group of like the mainstream historians who just continue to repeat over and over again. The government propaganda from that era, um, for example, like what you're taught in school about robber bands. But then, usually, somewhere out there, someone will emerge that says, "Hold on a minute, wait, wait a minute, what, what, what's going on with, with this narrative? There's something not right here." And then you'll have, um, you know, like economists writing things like robber barons were neither robbers nor barons. Um, the, the Great Depression was actually caused by the, uh, the multiple things that the government did, um, versus what you're told in school that the government, the, Helped the, it mar out. the free market caused the Great Depression, the government came in to save the day. So, these, these World things. World War II is great. Yeah, World War II that ended, helped, World War II ended the Great Depression. Great jobs, man. That, that's what you're taught in, in middle school, because that was the government narrative at the time. But there are historians out there, there are economists, economic historians out there today, you know, after that generation has died off, that are saying, wait a minute, these things aren't true. And they may or may not be right on, on their opinions. Like there's an excellent Chicago school narrative on the Great Depression that I think mm -hmm. it's a lot right. It's called Great Myths on the Great Depression. But it's written from, like I said, Chicago school perspective, which means that they um, favor interaction in, in, intervention from the fed and they were saying that you know what the fed did was the wrong kind of intervention instead of the other kind but i think there's still a lot to learn from from that paper even if you disagree with the existence of the fed because it goes over line by line it's like 15 pages of just everything that the government did that was just screwed up the economy so bad for, and there's so many things that they did it wasn't just one thing and um, it's an example of revisionist history. Um, it's, it's a great example, and I would imagine, I, I would like to see an Austrian take on it, because I'm sure it's even better. But um, I'll put a link in the show notes for Great Myths of the Great Depression, because it, it's an excellent paper, even though it is written from the Chicago perspective. Um, th this kind of thing happens. Is, is, is there a particular area of history that you're researching? Are you doing any kind of uh, revision uh, now, or are you investigating? Uh, I mean, we're, we're always sort of in 
Um, no matter what you do, you're, you're hoping to challenge some of the, the existing tropes. Um, not, you know, not really. My dissertation stuff is probably pretty far outside what we're talking about here. Okay. Um, you, you know. Care to discuss that or? Uh, it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of boring. I mean, I, I work, I work on media stuff and, uh, okay. uh it, 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 it's kind of not helpful at the moment, but, uh, um, yeah, I mean, in general, I, I, I do, I mean, one of the things that, that I would think would be interesting maybe to talk about is, um, for all of us, is there's this sense in which, and I, you know, I'm not anti-science, I'm, I'm not anti, you know, rationalist in any way, uh -huh. but there is a sense in the social sciences and in, and in the humanities where you kind of get out of them what you put into them, and... In many of these cases, these are the differences are debates that go back to you know the early modern period and before. So you kind of we're never going to get rid of this, right? Like was was the Great Depression caused by the government or was it caused by you know uh, well, reckless speculation? Well, you'll never convince people that are on one side of the divide that it's the other, right? Well, so the those people variables are so intertwined. It's, the variables are very intertwined. There's a lot of confounded variables. Um, yeah. And I don't know exactly what to do about it, because part of it just kind of makes me want to say, fuck it, right? I'm just going to do what I do, and I'm going to believe what I believe, and I have good reasons, but I can't convince you or anyone else. You can't convince anybody, because people pretty much make up their mind. Well, and then, well I think they do. And but then they... Uh, Rationalized to, to uh, you know, they, they, confirmation right, right. bias. That's how everybody thinks. I think that's so huge, and the way everybody thinks that it's what, what I think is vastly underrecognized. The social sciences is that none of the social sciences and economics is like this really fine borderline between social science and um, like hard science. It really does hit that line very it nicely. Crazy math. Yeah. Yeah. Um, crazy what? Crazy math and economics. Finance in particular is like crazy math, but um, it, it it seems to me that um, the social sciences, what they suffer from in general, is there's no testability. You can't. Yes. You can't uh, recreate the conditions at a super macro level. No. Um, to that end, I don't consider the social sciences invalid. Right. But my contention is, it seems to me that all they're really doing is, um, th th it's conjecture, it's theory. It, There's a, just a whole bunch of bullshit in there. No, I wouldn't say it's bullshit. I, I would just there sit there is. and say it's like... Not all of it. I'm just saying there's a lot. <laughs> it's, you know, people say economics, economics is a social science, and you hear this said about well, economics all the time. It is to an extent. extent. I was yeah. discussing this. But so, but, go ahead. Um, people say economics is intestable. I kind of disagree with that, because there are so many data points when it yeah, comes to economics. Of. We have 800 years of history, and we have hundreds of countries that have done... Things and when you have this much data, you can extract. Maybe it's not as good as chemistry. It's not as good as physics, but you can extract some pretty reasonable data from this. There's a book out there called um, uh, "This Time Is Different: Eight Centuries of Financial Folly." It details 800 cool. years of people doing the same thing over and over and over again. It's not identical. History right. rhymes. Right. It doesn't repeat. But That's you can. Um, it's true. It, it is. It's a goddamn platitude. It's still whatever. True. No. Um, all right. History true. could potentially no repeat magic. exactly. Uh, all the same people could be reborn and could do exactly the same thing, Danny. Just, just for you. Okay. Um, anyway, oh, why are you being si made similar things happen over and over again throughout history, and they generate similar results. This is an example of, I would, I would say that the, the study that this book has done is as close as you're going to get to science when, when it comes to economic history. And it's, it has a lot of data. So, well, there's a lot of data involved in economics, but I would say it is still at least 
partially a social science? No, it, it is, and, that, and that's why I said it's, it's never going to be. It's good. What's it all good for? Because it, it is numbers. It is yeah. more recordable. It, it's never going to be as good as 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 chemistry, but I, I think it's better than what people say. It is. So one of the one of the things that I think is really important is to note that this is exactly the argument that breaks the Austrians away from all other economists, all right? Yeah. All other economic schools, because, you know, in human they're action... Not a, they're not into... Yeah. They're not into empiricism. They're not into empiricism. And that's where I, I tend to disagree when I start looking at books like this, this Eight Centuries of Financial well, Folly. I, I, think, I, I think there is something to be learned from empirical I think it's, information. Listen, I think it's on a spectrum. I think, some th I think some things are more constant than others. Mises, in human action, says... All uh, econometric history or econom econometrics is history. It happened in the past. We don't know anything. It's it's hard. Right. It, now, is that entirely true? I'm with you. I think there are reasons to suspect that in similar cultures, similar patterns unfold. But but we know we know from from the 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 anthropological literature, for example, that economies can work in really 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 different ways. Really different ways. Uh, you've heard of the the ultimatum game? Have you ever heard of this? Uh, I'm going to screw this up. I always screw it up. Um, so it's experimental economics where I think it's something like I'm going to give you I'm going to give you ten dollars and you have to split it with Danny. All right, you decide what the split looks like. Okay, you can give him five and you can take five and five, or you can take one and give him ten, or or one and nine. Sorry, yeah, I'm a historian. <laughs> um, but the point is, is Danny has the right to. Squash the deal, and the money goes away, and nobody gets anything. So I'm handing you $10. What's the split going to be? Okay, so we've played this game, and I can't remember who did this. It's, it's, it's out here in the literature somewhere. But we've done it across cultures, and we know that in some places, some really strange things happen. Um, and so one of the things that happens is people will be overgiving. I'll take $1, and I'll give Danny 9 um, But we also know, But in some of those cultures, the people... Would reject the deal. They say, "No, you're not giving me nine dollars." <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. I why, now, why? Why would? Why did they do that? Why did they do that? The reason why is in those cultures they have a very, very intense uh, sort of fixation on reciprocity and oh. keeping tabs. So if you give me nine dollars, now I owe you. Something. Now I owe you something, and it's going to be more than nine dollars. That's how that culture works. Well, so what I'm saying is, is in similar cultures, so America. 1970, America 1900, America 1850, maybe even America 1800. We can expect these variables to to, to well, stick together, but it, but there's no reason why they would have to, and there's no reason that a hundred years from now, supply and demand will work exactly like it does here, and there's no reason why the the coefficients will be the same as they are now. Well, well, they could be very well, I think very the, different. The Federal Reserve System. has just a huge effect that's not even really realized by people. Just the way that money is, the, the creation of money the way it is, it's just so much different than a different type of money it could be, say, Bitcoin or gold or something. I, I think it just perverts everything yeah. down to the fibers in this carpet or well, the ceiling paint or whatever. It's, of course, yeah. You can't imagine how yeah. far that goes. And, well, Jacques, what I was going to get at is that um, economics does not necessarily dictate that um, capitalism is correct nor socialism is correct. What it what it tends to I disagree. It no, it it I will say economics tends to favor uh capitalism. But what I will say on in terms of um money is incentive is kind of the key point of economics is understanding what people's what people prefer. Right. Um so money is not necessarily the the guarantee of someone's behavior. Uh, and money can be very useful in that capacity, but it's not the guarantee. Um, like, people, like, and I understand, I'm not trying to be particularly critical, but there are people, there's a lot of people, that will give their money to other people freely because they believe in something that's imaginary. And... Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. That imaginary. Just pass it around. That imaginary uh, point. Yeah. Is of higher value. 
Yeah. And economics is merely a discussion, as far as I can tell, as um, what do you hold more important than what you yeah, so currently... It's a reflection of what people do. Are you saying people are value maximizers? <laughs> they... Well, thank you. Yes. Thank are you. you always want to prove the value of the things well, in your environment. Everyone is. But what are their values? But that's, everything. That's exactly, right. that's exactly like, and that's, everything boils that's down why to the values. Austrians, the, the that's why the Austrians have a different approach. They say the econometrics, measuring these things, which is, is basically in dollars. It's the only way you can do mm -hmm. econometrics mm -hmm. is dollars. They say, well, okay, but all we really know is that people maximize value, that they maximize utility. And listen, for some people, like you said, you and me might not give one red cent to the imaginary man in the sky. Some people might give everything they own yep. for that, right? On the other hand, utility maximization, we know people do things like set themselves on fire. How do you rationalize that? How do you think about that in terms of economic activity? Exactly. <laughs> like what, what if, if, what if there was a widespread culture of setting yourself on fire? Everyone believed that if you set yourself on fire, you would achieve the, the greatest good, you know, imagine. Right. You get yeah. the greatest 71 good. 71 virgins or something like that. Uh, yeah. How would you ever know oh. anything? How, mm. how would you, you call yourself predict an that kind of activity? <laughs> um, so that's, but, but, but that's why the Austrians are so, are, are so, uh, Agnostic. They're so. They, we know that people chase value, but we can't tell you a whole lot about you know why that, they value this or that. But yeah, you have to have your, your or basic. What value. You, you got to have your basic premises, you know, or, or you're going to be a Keynesian or something. You so, know what I mean? If you if you don't understand that people are basically self-interested, sure. then you're not going to understand anything about economics. I'm not a. Yeah. No. Absolutely. So I think we want to wrap up the show. Um, is there anything you want to say before we go, Jacques? I would uh, like to future uh, plans. Um, don't forget like, Kelly. I'd like to hear something from Kelly before uh, we are done. She's been sitting there quietly. Hi, with, Kelly. The tense of the eye. She does. I feel like we just talked about everything. I, yeah. I mean, I feel I feel like we've been. I don't know. Do you have any topics you want to get to? I mean, you can edit all this anyways. Right? No, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. But uh, we're gonna I'd make like sure to, I did it. I'd like to get <laughs> Kelly to tell us her her story I about coming. We already did that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> must Kelly have been pretty know. short. I don't remember. No, just some of the That's stuff we talked story. about. Um, I don't know if you want to get into that at all, as far as um, what you shots. want to do with your. Um, your your degree in terms of setting up schools, oh, like yeah, educating yeah, yeah. children. Yeah, I mean, ideally, I think. And man, you want to move to Africa gonna... and educate some of the kids? Well, I, I, you know, I. Oh fuck no! I got a full beer. Is I, that the economics I, 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 of your uh, situation? Well, I think. Um, <laughs> okay. I, I've talked to Joe before. I would like to, to to do my own thing at some point and set up. Um, I mean, I think the the academic model as it's set up right now is a sinking ship. It's probably going to get infusions from uh, government. the government very soon. No. And well, that yeah, would yeah, well, that I, would I think probably... college is a bubble. The economic model of college? I, yeah, I The do. bubble's got a long way to go. I think it's got a long no, way to go. I don't it's... think so. Well, who knows? No, it's, it's, We're already it's, in a situation exactly. who knows? where the return on college is at this crossing point. Oh, no, we're, we're Pat. No, and, so for most people, it's... I really don't think negative. it's 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 a negative. I think it's been a negative. Yeah, yeah I think I think college, university, education as we have it is 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 about to it's on the verge yeah. of a But education a isn't over. No, and, and that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. I value what's being done there in many cases, sometimes well, the, less so. Just but, the internet and the availability no, I, yeah. of information is just ridiculous. And the government the the, gonna, the amount of money that is infused into education you know, especially in this country that we know about more, is just ridiculous, yeah. and it makes a college education ridiculously expensive because there is money in the, you know in the education system that comes from the government. So now it costs you know fifty or a hundred thousand dollars a year or whatever it is to go to school nowadays, and you're not going to get that money back. Well, I think for you know for my money, and there's different... fifty years ago, you can go to school and get a degree and and, and get a good return on your investment. Nowadays, I, I think there's something to be said for uh, sort of old-fashioned university education uh, in a room with people. Uh, I, I think there, there, are, there is value to it. Now, having said that, I think the problem is, and, you know, the Internet is great. It's going to, no matter what, it's going to enrich what we do. We're faster. facing a combination of a 
college bubble and a technological revolution. In well, no, I, I don't think it's, I don't, I don't devalue the, yeah. uh, the necessarily school as such. I, sure. I, I don't, I don't really have a, a well-formed opinion on that. I think one of the biggest problems with school is the infusion of government. No, I, I agree. I agree. It, it, it just totally what I, distorts what I would like the to see, system. What I would like to see is something like a college education, where people can come together and there's some sense of community and there's some sense of a collective enterprise. Free market college education. But, but one that doesn't cost what it does now. It's ridiculous, right? Um, well, I think if there's a free market system, it wouldn't... There, it'd be nowhere near that kind of cost. Oh, I, I think that's absolutely right. I, I think that's absolutely right, and it's what I'm interested in. I'm interested and I'd like in to go back to my uh, the original speed round there, and it's if there wasn't this government coercion or, or all these laws, college would probably be 5 or 10%, and you'd, probably, you'd get a lot more value out of it. And medical Cheaper. care yeah, would be 5 or 10% of what it costs, and it would probably be a lot better because you don't realize all this bullshit they throw at you the controls and the money yeah. and everybody, you know, using the government to get what they want doesn't really bring the core value of education, which is I want to learn something and maybe get it and get into a career that'll make me money, which should be the core value of going to a university or I'm sick and I want to get, you know, fixed yeah. up might be the core value of, you know, medicine or, or to be healthy in the first place. Yeah. Those those values are are totally perverted by no. The, I, uh, I think that's right. I think I think the universities are the, uh, just don't know what they are, right? So on one hand, we're telling no. Or I, I think I think they, there's two or three different aims that we're supposedly satisfying when when we send a kid to to the university, and in many cases we're like the Rus the Russians have a have a proverb. It's something like like. If you chase two rabbits, you don't catch either. Well, I have this. Uh, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Right? I have this theory yeah. about um. You know, organization and organisms, and it kind of relates to just about everything. But uh, an organism, you know, when you're born, you have this core purpose to to live and to be happy. And then by the mm -hmm. time you get old, you got like diseases and stuff. Yeah. You know, that's why I think you need to like that pristine thing of the egg. You need the the birth and death process to start over, so you're not like you don't have you're all now perverted by diseases and stuff and that's where companies and universities and the whole school system is so perverted where they're not following the core principle of education but you no, know, I think that's right I think and, that's right and that's what happens with everything when you when you got government control it doesn't really follow what it wants it, it you know gets perverted there are different interests when it comes to education the interest of the student is almost always their own economic interest. That's what motivates most people to sign up for yes. school, is they want to be able to make money later. They don't want to be destitute. No, but when you, even thinking that But when you give it. them money, and when you loan right. them money, and you're, right. you're 17, 18 years old, and you can say, okay, I'll loan you 50 grand a year, and... That's well, part that, of, that's I didn't let me finish my point. Other people have different reasons why they want to loan people money and give them money to go to school, um, sure, maybe they're um, they're looking at at the financial situation, but they also want to make sure that people have a certain set of belief system and and a certain cultural knowledge base that can be implanted in them through this process of of education, and that's why you have people who stress the importance of a liberal arts education, which does almost nothing for what the student's goal is, is to yes. make money. Those are the two rabbits I'm talking about. Yes. And so then the question is, do you want to go... To so then they try to combine them into one degree. You get a degree in um, finance, and you have to take a course on humanities, or um, I had to study... Yes. I had a degree in, in, in business management. I had to study. Um, but there's a hundred rabbits out there. Yeah, what I'm saying. I had to study <laughs> rocks and minerals. I had to go to a rock and mineral lab um, <laughs> in sure. order to get my my management degree. Um, I, you know, I had Seriously. to study geology, and it, and it doesn't really have anything to do with mm -hmm. it. Well, and, broadly, what I mean by the by the two rabbits, I guess I'm going to run with this theme is at least it, insofar as the curriculum. Well, I should finish one more thing. Go ahead. Um, in the process. Even when I went to graduate school and took only finance classes, because I took such a broad base of finance classes, 
there was no one job yeah. that I was ready to do when I left school. Whereas if I had had a really focused graduate level education on say mergers and acquisitions, I could have left college and immediately got like a six figure job working in merger, mergers and acquisitions. As it was, I had one course on that. And that's not enough to land me a job in that field. If there were a school that taught mergers and acquisitions from a finance perspective, that would have been more valuable to me. That would have been a better way for me to spend $20,000 in two and a half years of my life. Well, then you fucked up. <laughs> well, the school doesn't <laughs> I was, I was going to say. In the tech field, though, schools like this do exist. Yeah. Well, and that's, and, and that's these, exactly these schools right. are starting to pop up, and it's not just online that this is happening. And Joe, I can, but I can tell you because I know when, and I agree with you, large, large, I mean, almost one hundred percent. When you start down this road, start talking about useful training, like what people actually want, the first thing you're going to be confronted with is, uh, you know, accusations that you're a philistine. Um, what, what do you mean? By uh, that? That, what is a philistine? that you mm-hmm. don't value. The, the the arts that you don't value literature that you don't value uh, maybe all, he doesn't I all don't those, all those things <laughs> I mean what I value is not making twelve dollars an hour doing some bullshit job right um doing somebody's well, what, what uh, filing and accounting when I have the intellect to manage merger and acquisition transactions but I lack the experience to land that job. Or to become a real estate analyst where I can tell somebody whether or not they should buy that skyscraper. What I'm saying, though, is this this is the argument that you're going to confront when, when you say, oh, we should have more specialized training. And specifically what they'll tell you, what, what, what the argument will be is that, oh, all of these things are important for making, you know, a well-rounded citizen because you don't want to live. But, so that's somebody want else's to, interest, no, you that, don't, not the person the whole, who paid $20,000 to that, go to that That's that's my point. The matter is the government goes in there. If it yeah. was a market system where Joe could say, hey, I wish there was a school, Absolutely. and uh, this Absolutely. merger and acquisition guy could say, you know what, I could probably make a school, and I'll bet I could get people to come there. Yeah, and that's because starting to happen. The market will provide it. If, if there's a, people that want to do it, somebody will probably yeah. come up, because come it, up it, and it, sell it. The way it used to work is you would go to one of these schools and you would get this broad spectrum education, and then you would go to a company, and then they would train you to do their job, yeah. kind of ignoring your whole education in, in, in the process, and then you would stay there for, for a couple of decades, and it would be worth it that tens of thousands of dollars that they invested in you. But because that doesn't happen anymore, it's become extraordinarily difficult to get started in a company because nobody wants to spend tens of thousands of dollars investing into somebody who's just going to turn around and leave. Right. Well, and, and so now a market is starting to form for some of these other colleges and or, or schools, not necessarily colleges, like um, this hack reactor out in California and Texas oh, God. that trains people to do um, coding, uh, coding and, and web development, uh, which is coding too. Um, people, they're, they're saying people leave that school and, and immediately make like seventy-five to a hundred thousand dollars a year huh? because they're trained specifically to do an actual task that they're going to do on the job. And <coughs> and, and I think people really need this. And, yeah. and starting in, and if I had a finance class like that instead of what I had, which was better than what you get as an undergrad. Talk about coding. Um, I, I would be in much okay. better shape right now, and I wouldn't be in this job that I hate doing skills yeah. that are, that I mean, I could literally teach a 14-year-old to do what I do. I mean... There is a value to a yeah. broad-based education, and I'm all for it, but that Not should be your own everyone. choice. Yeah. And I think we all, all of us here can have a broad-based education because we just like to learn shit. Well, well yeah, some, we like of us, I mean, some of us, I some of us went to college, you know. But most, <laughs> most importantly, <laughs> semester. but most importantly, if you don't want it and you're just trying to get trained for a job, that should be an option that's available. Well, exactly. Right? Of course, you should do it with yeah. everyone. But maybe you get your job and then you right. go and you learn all. But this nowadays, stuff. Yeah. you can just read books. Yeah, totally. yeah. yeah. But doesn't Google everyone stuff? remember why you first went to college? Yeah. Like I came out of public school, 
very structured by it. It's grade 13. And I was terrified when it ended abruptly in 12th grade and had no job skills and no, no right. idea what I was going to do. Totally. And someone's handed me all this money and said, here, yeah. you can go here and we'll give you a little place to live. Hmm. Right. And totally. you don't have to pay. Yeah, so what if we ended Summer that camp. system yeah. and then instead of being... 22 years old when you exit school and then you begin training to become productive at age 22. What if you started training to become productive at age 12? Yeah. And then by the time you're 18, you're as productive as a 30-year-old is now. Well, Kelly, may, may, may I inquire? Um, okay, I don't, I don't know your age. Um, I'm, and I'm, I'm going to basically ask you your age. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, well, I'm glad you warned me. Thank you. Um, it's a trigger warning. Just yes. let her know exactly. Just give her one more warning before it comes. Um, <laughs> so you, yes. you, know, <laughs> you went to college, right? Um, when did you enter college? I was 17. Uh, 18. Give me a year. <laughs> oh, a year? That would have been 2001. 2001, okay. Yes. So, so when I finished my undergrad. Uh, really? 14 yeah. plus 17, she's 31. I was, you know what, that's right, I was 21 when I got my bachelor's. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm, Go ahead. Okay, um, so, uh, this is, it strikes me what you're telling me is, um, this was before, like, the college bubble. College was cheaper, but there was, there was tons of aid, it wouldn't have cost me anything at the time, at the moment. So, why did you, okay, so... Why did you accept all this quote unquote money then? I had good grades and it was easy. It was the least terrifying option instead of like trying to go right into the job market. She was right, ready. my only experience with Blockbuster Video and I was really good at school. And Black someone was promising exist. me more of what I was already good at and a place to live and I didn't have to pay so for it right now. Was it a good investment? No. Okay, so no. Um, may I inquire? And you, you don't have to answer. Um, here it comes. Hey, How much did that actually really cost you? Like, like the, monetarily? Yes, the load. I think it cost me more in time. Like, I learned a lot of, of your stuff. Life. You had a ride, didn't you? Yeah, well, I had a free ride. Well, you had a free ride. Oh, a yeah, free ride. ride. Yeah. Oh, so this wasn't like a loan. No, this was your money. Oh. It <laughs> <laughs> wasn't Danny's money, he's the same age, so he didn't oh, No, 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 so. I'm younger than her, and I, I, I guess I like, paid into her. The thing is, like, students are gonna keep, people of college age are gonna keep wanting college. Because that's all they know. Yeah, yeah. but and if I it's think free, if you're, then, if it's, yeah. exactly. The if college it's, bubble is gonna keep existing as long as, like, K through 12 education is exactly how it is. Well, well, well the thing is, is we make it, we make it overly easy. Uh, we incentivize going to, to it, let's be honest, in many cases it's adult summer camp for four years, right? We incentivize it by basically giving out cheap loans, right? That's where this is all coming from. It's, it's basically free money. from the time you're three or four years old. It won't yeah. cost you till four years later? Like, what 18-year-old worries about four years in the future that hard? Well, um, I mean, Most anyone, well, I grew up in a particular environment, but... My like my parents were very you know money focused, so I I find it a bit troubling that there's a lot of people that just kind of sit there and kind of dismiss money as if it's like always going to be there as if it's always going to be a guarantee. Mm. I've been to uh, third world countries, and uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's fucking shit's boring. broke. Yeah. 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 You know, you you're talking like, you know, they don't have electricity. The electricity they can generate either comes from like some type of windmill system, but like I just think like people don't really take into account the value of these um I would I would say they're necessities necessarily given what I've experienced, but they're highly useful like like a cell phone, most people can't imagine not living in a life, except you, asshole. Um, <laughs> I hate technology. I hate convenience. I hate that shit. Okay. Well, my cell phone. <laughs> okay, and Priv. Um, but it, it, like, they really, a lot of people take for granted the fact... I just caught that, by the way. 
<laughs> and Priv, is that what we're saying? Yeah. Well, and Prim. And well, Priv, Priv has a certain, uh, there's a lot of Anarcho primitive is, is to yeah, I think that's what he's calling it. I know, but the Priv. Where's your fucking bow and arrow? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. technology. You want, you want six billion people to be wiped out. Yeah, tech. Yeah. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, it's 7.2 billion people have to die. Yeah. In, in a... But like, I just, I, I sit there like, there, there, there's... Yeah. Yeah, you it, can't use a bow and arrow, that's technology. There, there, there's, there's, it's so unforgiving, like, the, the ability to, um, I guess, advance, um, you know, you're, you're taking on debt, Nowadays, which is sad because that's not what it what the market should deliver, but that's what it is delivering now. It delivers drones for the economy because these people are forced to work, yeah, at jobs that they hate in order to make that payment, and it's not. Which might not even touch the principal. That's really sad. It's not dispensable through bankruptcy, mm -hmm. and the only way out is to either earn enough money to pay that back or, go or to wait prison. fifteen years. For the government to dispatch that debt, and who's to say 15 years from now the government will do it? Yeah. Why have they done and that before? Well, yeah, they they, they do. Um, they they will right now. If you're 15 years in and you haven't paid off your loan, it might be 20 years. I don't remember the number of years exactly. I think it's 25. 25. You go far enough, and eventually the government will discharge your student loan debt. But there's nothing to say that they won't change that. So you yeah, can't absolutely. count on that, and that's 25 years of your life. That you lived in poverty in order to avoid paying your student loan debt. Plus the first 25 when you were going to school. Well, I plan on living forever. Yeah. So. The, yeah, so you spend 20 years in, you, you, know, you live right, until you're, you're 22 years lucky. old, and then you live another 25 years. You're basically 50 by the time you can discharge your student loan debt and start making money. I think the government and, should file bankruptcy and, uh, and dissolve government, itself. The government can't technically go bankrupt. Well, they, they have similar processes. Isn't no, they, they just they sit there and say, we have all this cattle, and we could just raise taxes. Uh -huh. And we could print money. <laughs> no, there's a limit. Uh -huh. there, there is a limit to the government's ability to extract wealth from its, no, it's, uh, not. From its people. Because it begins well, it's a practical to, limit. There's a practical limit. There's not a theoretical limit. There's a right. practical limit. Right. So theoretically, they could tax 100% of everything you earn, but that means you have very little incentive to earn anything. Yeah. So, and that's where the whole laugh curve well, Let's wrap in. this up. Um, I think we might turn this into two episodes. Yeah, because Joe we, keeps talking. I'm, I'm, t I'm telling you, man, by the time you look at this and all of the cross talk, <laughs> the, the talk, I'm telling you, you're going you're gonna to get about a half episode after you take all the, all the screaming and laughing out of it. We're leaving that in. Okay. The screaming and laughing is It'll just be one long laugh track. <laughs> No, so so the the model that I'm thinking of, I mean, if you think if you think in the big picture here, the people who buy this debt ultimately, hopefully, the, or who you want to buy the debt in an ideal world, are employers, right? They're the ones who ultimately, when it comes down to it, if you have student debt that a student that a, that an employee has picked up, hopefully he's learned something, and he's going to come get a job at your firm, but you have to pay him enough, so he can deal with his debt, right? So right. ultimately, yeah. that's, that's, the, that's the, the loop of incentives and payoffs. So my and I'm sure that's why doctors get paid like $50,000 a year straight out of college. Because my, it's just enough money for them to live in a one-bedroom apartment and pay their interest payments on that $300,000 loan that they get when they come out of medical yeah. school. So my, my idea <laughs> would be to bring these two things together and actually start talking to employers like what kind of curriculum would you pay for right like if a kid's gonna come to you with and let's 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 say it's gonna be low debt if a kid's gonna come to you with ten thousand twenty thousand thirty thousand dollars in debt not you know we'll, we'll, we'll cut it down from the hundred and fifty we're looking at nowadays or whatever but he's gonna come at you with some debt you're gonna pay him what's the what kind of training do you want this kid to have right and on the other end the other end of the pipeline you, you, you talk to prospective students you say look if you come in here, and you go through our curriculum, and you, you do the damn thing, you don't fuck around, you, you, you attend to your studies, and you graduate, you have a guaranteed spot at Google. Yeah, and an employer could say, hey, uh, you come and work for me, you know, after two years you're still working here, I'll pay off your $30,000. Well, that's exactly, exactly right. <laughs> it could be that explicit. Or on the other hand, you could go to Google and be like, hey, you come, come to Ferp Dirt University, that's my university. 
And uh, so Google will establish fellowships expressly for the purpose of paying for kids to come and go through that system because they know that they're going to make good employees when they come out. They're paying for the yeah. education up front, uh, you know. So we need to start treating employers as the customers of these universities, not the student? Well, yeah, absolutely. Well, even, well, even now they don't treat the student as the customer. The student, the, the customer is like society the because the government no, is paying. The student's right. a customer. Right. And well. How do you explain like rock climbing walls at universities now? Well, there's this, that there there are there are incentives that go off in every direction, and that is why yeah. it's so pathological. Oh. That is why it's so screwed up. Yeah, that's what I said. There's a hundred gram, it's not two. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's really screwed up. I mean, because basically you have a demographic of people who have free money in their pocket, and I would say it's free. It, well, it's it's feel, in many in some cases it's it free. Feels but, free. It feels free. But it's 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 very it's very low cost. They have money. access to money that they couldn't otherwise get. And they have a very low uh, what do you call it when when you don't really care how you spend something. There's there's an economic term for this when you're not very discriminating. Spending um, someone else's money. When you're spending yeah. somebody else's money, you you give it to the. You buy cool shit. Other with it, people's right? money. <laughs> so you don't. They're not thinking about the, They're not thinking about the consequences. Four you you years don't go to the university that gives you a good bang for your buck. You don't go to the university that gives you the best education divided by uh, cost, right? You go to the school since you don't really care about the cost up front. You go to the school that has the the, the rock climbing wall, the nicest dorms. The, uh, you well, know, we call this incentive. The best football team. The best football team. All these things that you wouldn't care about if you were paying out of your pocket up front, right? Right. The incentives are screwed up. Yeah, absolutely. So, should we wrap this up? Let's wrap it up. Any final words? Um, I really hate poor people, and I really hate <laughs> <new> roads. <laughs> And roads. Fuck them roads. And I really hope everyone that lives on a river gets cancer. That's, that's going to be my intro take. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, you know, breaks. <laughs> I hope pollution pollutes all your rivers, and I'm going to sit here on my Great Lakes. And that's why you're an anarchist. Yeah, because I don't give a shit about anyone else except <laughs> me. What the fuck? And you like to blow shit up. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, people. Oh, you like to blow people? They're all the same thing. And, and Trump is going to make America great again. Don't forget yes, that. Yes, Trump is going to make everything fantastic <laughs> and beautiful. And he's going to give us all Kool-Aid. Well, no. I don't care if you don't get Kool-Aid. <laughs> but I do, hope Purple this, Kool-Aid. I do hope this hat kind of directs a little bit of radioactivity towards you. A cancer beam right at your, right at your forehead. All right. <laughs> well, I don't hate poor people. You faggot. <laughs> we jumped the shark. Here. How about you? You, you hate poor people, Kelly? I think the screenshot for the Kelly second part of the show should be us at him, like, like okay. jumping a school of sharks. If I don't have to think about them being there, they they can do whatever. Poor so people. I don't want to look Fuck at poor them. people. <laughs> All right, poor. let's get some pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I'm poor. <laughs>